I dwelleth in you. Okay? We the temple of the Most High measure us. And the altar, the altar is the priesthood. It's the priest. And them that worship therein. Who worship in there? Israel or the congregation. Okay? Verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded. And there was great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. The kingdoms of this world that we in now is, become, is going to become the kingdom of Christ. Hamashiach Yahweh And of his Christ. Of the Most High in, in Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. So all these kingdoms on this earth are going to be turned over to Hamashiach Yahweh and the Most High. First, Amashiach, y'all was shy. You have a question on what we're talking about, put it in text. Us, man. You just got here. Listen. You see that? The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. The kingdom of the Most High and of his Mashiach. And he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. That's right. Revelations. 14. 14th chapter. And we're going to look at the sixth verse. Let's see if the angel's still talking. We still in Revelation. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. So to preach, he got to be speaking the word, the gospel of Amashiach Yahweh Shai. Oh yeah. I'm making a proclamation to give glory and honor and praise to the Most High, Waha Mashiach Yahweh Shai, Baha Shama Mashiach Yahweh Shai. What is he going to say? Verse 8, And there followed another angel saying, he got an angel saying, talking again, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. America is fallen, is fallen. That great city, that great country, because she made all nations drink of the wine of her, of the wrath of her fornication. And you know everybody want to be westernized, Americanized. They want to follow the tradition of America. Because she uh, let everyone come over here and make all this money off of us. And trade and so forth. Little or nothing, taking care, trying to take care of everybody, trying to police the whole world. That's Babylon. Because Babylon is where Iraq is. It already failed as an empire. This is future prophecy of another Babylon where we are now, which is Babylon is Babal in the Hebrew, which is confusion. It means confusion. That's all you have here is a lot of confusion. And no one, anyone that says it's not is, is out of their mind. They need some uh, Prozac or something. Some kind of medication. <laughs> right if you don't say if you don't think this place is confused they trying to pretty soon they, they, they trying to go from state to state trying to get homosexuals to be married in the state California was just getting ready to try and pass it okay Revelation 14 and I want to look at verse 9 and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or his in his hand. Listen, this beast is a so-called Edomite nation. His image is the false depiction of Christ. Caesar Borgia. Because you're not gonna, you're not gonna remember, remember what first Corinthians, I mean first John 5 and 1 down says, try to spirit by the spirit, whether not they're of, of the most high in Christ. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ coming to the flesh is not of God, but that spirit of Antichrist. Now what? It's a 
flesh is your skin. Pinch yourself. He had a certain look. He had an identity. His identity was he was a black man, as it says in Revelation 1 and 15, and his feet like on the fine brass if they burned in a furnace. Now somebody put an image of, of Christ as being white. And we know who it is. And that's in his marking his forehead means his lies, his religion, his false education, his philosophies. And marking his hand is working to uphold to support Esau's kingdom. The Army, Navy, Marines, police, CIA, FBI, the uh, the things that, su that help support him and doing the things that he's doing to come against us. Just like you've seen, he waited for five days before he gave help to the brothers and sisters in New Orleans. And you have brothers and sisters that support that. Don't justifiably say that he did right. Is that right? No, it's not right. We sit here, we was online seeing it, as we were online seeing what was going on on Wednesday. They had still hadn't received any help. Come on. Wake up. It's time to wake up, people. You can't change the prophecy. You can't change this. Verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. The harvest is the children of Israel. That's why we got to work hard to get our, this word out to our people. That they know this truth and come back to the real truth. And not all these lies and false education and false religions. The secular destruction of the Edomite rulership king. In all kingdoms. As you say, you're going to take down all kingdoms. How, is, how, how else is he going to be set up as a kingdom for us? And for himself, first and foremost. The harvest is cutting down Esau and Babylon, America. He's going to cut them down. He's going to cut them down. They've got to be taken out of power. They're trying to be the police of the earth and do everything that they want to do without the guidance of the Most High in Christ. Jeremiah 51 and 33. Say, for thus said the Lord of hosts, Jeremiah 51, 33. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the power of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thress her. It's time to thress America, is saying. This is a future prophecy. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Better believe it. You better believe it. Angels with the sickle. We just we read that earlier. Angels with the sickle. You know, a sickle is what you do to use the harvest up, uh, to, to cut the grass down. Right. Uh, Matthew 13, 41 and 42. Matthew 13, 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth there it is right there the son of man with the sharp sickle Matthew 25 31 that's what I wanted to love to I know we have been there before I'm just about finished Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, 200 million, mind you, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. He's going to sit upon the throne of his glory. To have his glory. Oh, yes. He's going to be praised. Everybody's going to look upon him then. Uh, Revelation 14 and 17. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And another came out from the altar. Let me see. One came out from the, the temple which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And that sickle is destruction. Verse 18. And another angel came out from the altar 
which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe, meaning the one-third of the nation of Israel. We're good, the most high's cluster that's from the vine. He say he has a cluster, he has a he has his own grape, and that's us, the children of Israel. And the angel thrust in her sickle into the into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even into the horse bridle, horse bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furloughs. That's a lot of blood. That's a lot of blood. And remember what it told you about how in, Re in Romans 11 and 11 down, how it told you, it told them that they were grafted in, these, these other days were grafted into our olive tree, our vine. They said, boast not against the vine because the, they, don't buy, they don't bear the root. They don't bear the root of Christ. Christ is the root, but Christ bared them for a period of time till we could come into to the, to the, the grape is ripe. The cluster is ripe. That's what we're doing now and learning this truth. And then he said, Both not against the branches, for their they, thou beareth not the root, but the root thee. He said, If thou boast, the most I could take us and put us in our own olive tree. And if he put us in our own olive tree, in the olive tree that they have been grafting into among us, what do you think will happen to them? That's why it's telling you about this vine. This is the end. That's why, that's, <laughs> that's why Paul is dropping it, but he's, Christ is bringing it more home right here when he sins. And the angel, verse 19, and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth. Because you tell you, remember to tell you that their vine never going to turn green. We're a green olive tree. Their vine never going to turn green. That's the future prophecy of them. And remember when we go into salvation, they said, they said, we erred from the truth. They said, we knew not God. And cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of the Most High. In Christ, you read the wine press, you, you read that in uh, uh, Psalm, uh, Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. He said, hey, blood going to be all over this garment. That's the Edomites. That's what Christ said. Let's talk about Christ. And the wine press was trodden within, without the city. And blood came out of the wine press. This is the blood of people. Even to the horse bridle. That's a lot of blood. Up to a horse bridle. And by the space of a thousand and six hundred furloughs. Whew. That's a lot, people. This is why they don't like revelations. Revelation 16 and 3. And the second angel poured out his vow upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. Destruction, the more destruction. That's all it's talking about the end, destruction, contamination of the water, the sea, the rivers, the streams, and all of Esau's technology. Because the waters also mean knowledge. Verse 4 And the third angel poured out his vow, which is destruction. That's right upon the rivers and fountains of waters and they became blood you know come becoming blood you know there's a lot of blood like you were saying in the, in the uh, floods of new orleans a lot of blood people died and i heard the angel of the waters say thou art righteous o lord which art and was and shall be because thou hast judged us, which art, because he was in the Old Testament, and was, he was in the New Testament, and shall be, he's coming to reign in his kingdom, Amasiach Yahweh Shai, because thou hast judged us. And he's, both sides giving him all judgment. He's given him all the judgment. Verse 8, and the fourth angel poured out his vow or destruction upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Sound like a lot of love to me. 
I'm to teach in this in the churches. See, you see how you saw Esau is, is destroying the ozone with his space programs, and he's being he gonna be repaid by being burned, the sunburns, the skin cancer, and yet he still ain't gonna stop his evil works. Scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat. And blaspheme the name of the Most High, while Hamashiach Yahweh shot, which has power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. They're not going to give him glory. That's why I, I challenge you. If so, then you should find, you show me in number. So called white man that's bowing down to a black, bowing down to black Christ, to go trying to reach the black, our black creator with Carol Wood. Christ said, you see me, you see, he's having an express image of his father. You see me, you see my father, like father, like son. That's doing this and have his white wife and their white kids bowing down to a black man that you can see on TV that they can advertise it or they crying about it's wrong for them to put up that white picture. Even going that far, you don't ever see it. But yet still, how people fight to the death for them and they not even fight for themselves to say that what they're, they're doing is true and righteous. That's not right. It's not right, and it's not, it's not just, it's just, we just dealing with the truth, you know what I mean? Because we ought to deal with everyone, you know, we got to make it to the end. But the truth is the truth, and I don't have any problem talk, telling anyone the truth. This is the truth what I'm speaking. If it's not, then tell me it's not. It's the truth. And when we speak out as boldly as I am right now, which I speak on my TV program as boldly, because you hear what I say. I mean, I'm saying this, this is, this is, this is me. I'm just, this is what I'm saying, the truth. I can't go any different. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be, the angels ain't coming there dealing with me. I don't want the both sides to say no vengeful angel on me for what he showed me. And then I'm going to go behind what he's telling me and showing me. Oh, no. Now, if you have more truth than what I'm saying now, reveal it to us so we'll know. Because our people sit up there and when they say the Gentiles, they're not talking about, let me tell you something. When they say the Gentiles, they're not talking about no Asians. They ain't talking about Chinese. They ain't talking about Japanese. They're not talking about East Indians. They're not talking about uh, Arabs. Who are they talking about? The so-called white man. So-called white woman and, and their kids. That's what they're talking about. Because I ain't heard no black people so about. What about Chinese? What about Japanese? I ain't heard it. I haven't heard it. So they're only concerned about the so-called white people as Gentiles. Now, if you have, come forth with your reasoning. I have never heard it. I can put on tape after tape. I can put on tape like I played a tape today. I was tape four hours, eight hours. You don't have to hear my voice at all. It's so whatever you hear on the tape. And you will never hear it. I've never heard it. Have anyone in this room heard it? And that's sad. But that's something you need to think about. Spirit, Holy Spirit has brought it to me. That's why I'm speaking. Now, if you have, you if you've seen it, show me. Tell me. Revelation 17 and 7. And the angel said unto me, angel still speaking. Wherefore dost thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that care of her which have the seven heads and the ten horns. That's the seven major leading empire of the Edomite nation. And you know who they are, right? The seven leading empires. I guess I'll go to start going through some of this. I will go through this. I really don't know. Uh, the seven heads are the Greeks, the Romans, the Spanish, the French, the Germans, the Russian, the British. We sing a song. The Greeks, the Spanish, excuse, excuse me, the Greeks, the Romans, the Spanish, the French, the Germans, the Russian, the British. God bless. Mashima Mashiach was shot. And the ten, that's the seven heads, and the ten horns are the ten supporting Edomite nations, or the, the, they're called the European Economic Economical Community, or the European Community. That's what they're called. And they're ten, they're the ten common mar markets. The British, the Sweden, the Belgium, Norway, Brussels, Denmark, Luxembourg, 
Netherlands, Switzerland, and France. That's who they are. Okay. Uh, Revelation 18, 21. See if the angel still speak. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So all you that love your little America, they say it's going to be, because this is the end of the Bible. This is the end of the world. This is the end right here. Babylon is talking about America. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city, Babylon, be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. America's not going to be found no more at all. Revelation 19 and 17, I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, the angel still speaking, to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great power. And he's going to be eating up people, telling the birds to come and eat up the people, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Whew. Man. Revelation 20 and 1. I saw, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. A great chain in his hand. From the bottomless pit. You know, the bottomless pit is Europe, because they have no natural resources. Y'all know that, right? Angel is Christ coming down. Angel coming to Christ, coming down to Septimius of Bears, coming to the key, which is the power, the bottomless pit of Europe, and running the Caucasians into the Caucasus Mountains. Prophesied. We don't have any cameras in here. Anything that would be uh, that you would try and take away from the word of the Most High in yourself would be totally wrong. I can't let you do that. Uh, and the chain is captivity, putting them in captivity. That's why they were in the Caucasus Mountains from 193 AD to 1453 AD. Ask them. Just ask any white person, what were you doing in 1100s? 1200, choose any year. 1300, 13, 1315, 1318, 1375. Come on, y'all. I'm not quite sure everybody in here was, was, was uh, learn through the uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Caucasian race because they don't want to set up the curriculum for our learning in the school system, right? So I'm quite sure y'all know something to be to able to talk about from 1100, from 1000 to 1400 before the Renaissance period, don't you? Because you got a lot of knowledge between there, then, and now. But between the 193 AD the fall of the Roman Empire, you don't have much much knowledge at all, do you? Everybody can run their mouth. Run your mouth about that period of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell them to run their mouth about it. They don't have much to say, do they? Revelation 21 and 17. And he measured the wall thereon in 140 and 4 cubits, according to the measure of a man. That is of the angel. Woo! That's 216 feet, y'all. Now, Revelation 22 and 6. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord power of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. We're in the last book of the Bible. Listen. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true, and the Lord power of the holy prophets. Where the holy prophets at? In the Old Testament. Sent his angel to show unto his servants, the children of Israel, the things which must shortly come, must shortly be done. Revelation 22 and 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. 
So he sent his angel to testify the words that he that came from himself. Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, which work which are the words that came from the Father. Bahashama Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, the water from Yah Amah. Things. So who 